we applauded Jaguar's new XJ Saloon when it was launched back in 2002. The all-alloy body was an engineering triumph, yet this was also obviously still an XJ, in the manifestation that everyone loved. Except that not enough of them did. You can bang the retro drum only so long, it seems, and the XJ, like everything else in the Jaguar range apart from their latest XK, just hasn't sold in anything like enough numbers. But now the XJ gets an update. It's the exterior style that gets the major changes, aimed at making the XJ more assertive and more sporting. There's a revised front end with a new grille, new power vents like the XK, a rear spoiler, full width signature blades on the side and a new rear bumper. Inside the front seats have been redesigned to free up some more rear legroom. They're heated as standard, but for the first time you can option them with brilliantly effective cold air conditioning too. The latest Bluetooth system allows up to five phones to be paired to the in-car telephone system. Mechanically, the XJ is unchanged, so it's familiar ground we're covering here with the 4.2-litre supercharged V8 in the rip-rorting 60 grand XJR. It's a deeply impressive engine. When the urge is needed, you just plant the throttle. The supercharger responds instantly, and with its characteristic whine, the XJR simply lunges forward, reaching 62 miles per hour in just five and a half seconds. And it will simply go on and on accelerating, with no let-up if you're lucky enough to be tackling a German autobahn. Impressive stuff in any car, let alone a luxury saloon. Flat-out performance isn't the only trick in the book. Overtaking is rapid and safe, and just a touch of the accelerator pedal away. Push the sport button and the XJR is even more responsive. But here we get to several issues about this Jaguar, none of them insignificant. If you want to override the six-speed automatic transmission with some manual changes, the famous Jaguar J-Gate gear selector is now a pale substitute for today's paddle shifts. The XK Coupe has paddles and does it brilliantly but it looks like the money wasn't there for the big saloon. And notwithstanding clever computer control suspension, the XJR never really feels like a sports saloon. There's just not enough feedback or weight from the steering wheel, and although the seats may be new, they simply don't locate you well enough to encourage serious cornering speeds. With something this fast, you want to feel at one with the whole car, and that's an elusive target for the big Jag. It's on longer journeys in the grand touring tradition that the XJR works at its best. Inside there's the full leather treatment as well as American walnut, though if you choose, the wood can be replaced with a modern brushed metal finish. You can power the pedals back and forth to get the driving position just right, and there's microwave technology to adjust the cruise control speed according to the car in front. This car has the optional DVD screens built into the headrests. Lounging room in the rear is fine, without being overly generous. If you really need that stretch-out chauffeur experience, £1,700 buys you a long wheelbase version. The 2007 XJR is subtly improved, but it's hard to see the changes being enough to bring in many new customers. Still, exclusivity is an admirable virtue, and the XJR is still a very desirable car indeed. As for good points, well, there's fabulous straight-line performance, there's the comfort and luxury, and the overall refinement. On the downside, well, the retro style limits the appeal, it's an uninvolving driving experience for a performance car, and 16 miles per gallon is all too easy to achieve.